The Kraft Foods Company, makers of new parquet margarine, present Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There are two treats in store for you tomorrow when you buy Kraft's new parquet margarine. The whole family is sure to enjoy the appetizing taste of parquet and the, the way it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. And this is extra. With every pound of parquet, you can order a pair of lovely nylon stockings, famous Powers Model nylons, at half price. In just a few minutes, I'll have more to tell you about this sensational parquet margarine offer. Well, let's see what's going on at the Great Gildersleeves this evening. It's one of those rare occasions when the family is together the way it used to be. Marjorie slipped over from her house next door to chat with her uncle. Leroy has his school books on the floor in front of the fire. And the water commissioner is just relaxing. Oh, well, Marjorie, this is just like old times. Glad you dropped in, my dear. Well, it isn't often I can leave the twins, Unky. Evening, Miss Marjorie. Hello, Bertie. I heard you come in. Who's staying with them cute twins tonight? Her cute husband. <laughs> Leroy, stick to your homework. Okay. Gosh, a guy can't even be sociable. Anytime you want a sitter, you just call Bertie. Oh, thanks, Bertie. But Bronco's happy to do it tonight. He's working on his income tax. He's working on his income tax and he's happy? <laughs> well, he's happy just being home with the twins. Marge, why don't you have more twins and make them happier? What? <laughs> more deductions. <laughs> Leroy, try concentrating on your homework. I'm concentrating. Simon will agree. What was that? I'm reading Uncle Tom's cabin. <laughs> Homework. Yes, yes. Just think, Unky. It won't be long before the twins will be going to school and doing homework just like Leroy. Yeah, and if Leroy doesn't watch it, they'll catch up with it. I wish they would. I could get them to do my arithmetic. I'd say, kids, do your uncle's arithmetic or I'll send you to bed. Speaking of bedtime, isn't it about time you hustled upstairs? Oh, for corn's sake. Leroy, it's bedtime. If I'm going to be making hot chocolate, I'd better do it. Oh, boy, I'll stay up for that. No hot chocolate, Leroy. No? Sorry, but you know it makes you break out in a rash. Well, heck, I'm going to break out if I don't get some. <laughs> Poor Leroy. Betty, bye, Leroy. Betty, bye. Oh, brother. <laughs> Hot chocolate for you, too, then? Oh, thank you, Bertie, but I should go keep Bronco company. Yes, ma'am. Hot chocolate for you, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, not tonight, Bertie. I'm watching my calories. Okay, then Bertie will make hot chocolate for Bertie. Fine. Yes, sir, Bertie will make hot chocolate for Bertie. Because Bertie ain't watching her calories, she don't have to go to bed, and she ain't got no husband to go home to. <laughs> I certainly miss Bertie. Well, we miss you, too. Come over more often. Oh, I will. Good night, Unky. Good night, my dear. Oh, by George, what a fine little family I have. Uh, a little early, but I think I'll turn in. Get a good night's sleep. Uh. Oh, my goodness. Leroy's playing his radio. I thought I told him to go to bed. Sounds like a room full of cowboys and Indians. Leroy! Yeah. Turn off your radio. Okay. Gosh. What's going on? I'm doing my homework. <laughs> With the radio going? Yeah, arithmetic. Counting the pistol shots? <laughs> homework. I got a lot done this way. Can I turn it on again? A young man, keep the radio turned off. But it's so quiet I can't think. It's time for lights out anyway. Let's go to bed. Gee whiz. Homework, turn off your radio, lights out, go to bed. Things are awful strict around here. Now, well, Leroy? Whenever anybody thinks of an order, he gives it to me. It's for your own good, my boy. I'm not trying to punish you for anything, but the house would fall apart without a little routine. What would happen to our lives without a certain amount of routine? 
Shall we try it? <laughs> no. You understand, don't you, Leroy? I guess so. Good. Then go brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, set your alarm, go to bed, and be ready to get up in the morning. How about that? What? I'm not even in bed, and you want me to get up. <laughs> well... How do I get a transfer out of this outfit? <laughs> Leroy. I think I'll move over to Marge's for a while. Oh, now, Leroy. I mean it. You wouldn't move over there. Are you kidding? You'd miss Bertie's cooking. You might have to sit with the twins. And Marjorie might even have you doing the dishes. What do you say to that? I think I'll go to Marjorie's. Good morning, Bertie. Fine, Miss Gilfee. What's for breakfast? Everything that Leroy didn't eat. Has Leroy had his? Oh, yes. Sir. He was up bright and early. Had breakfast and left for school. Oh? Well, that isn't like Leroy. He usually has to be pulled out of bed, pushed down the stairs, shoved out the door, and aimed toward school. <laughs> yes, sir, but this morning it was different. Oh, good. He said he wanted to get out of the house before the routine got started. <laughs> routine? Yes, he said there was too much of it around here. <laughs> well... Leroy made quite a fuss last night about going to bed. If I didn't tell him to go to bed, he'd never go to bed. No, sir. Last night, he talked about moving over to Marjorie's. He did? <laughs> that boy. His hot waffle. Yeah, it looks wonderful. Incidentally, I reminded Leroy how much he'd miss your cooking. Oh, that boy ain't going nowhere. He'd miss you too, Mr. Kelsey. Yeah, Leroy's getting to the age where he doesn't like much supervision. But he knows when he's well off. Yes, sir. It's Miss Marjorie. Come in, Marjorie. Now, don't tell me I'm in time for coffee. Yes, ma'am. Sit down, my dear. Here's the coffee. Oh, thank you, Bertie. I can only stay a minute. I came over for Leroy's blanket and pillow. His blanket and pillow? His blanket and pillow? Well, he stopped on his way to school to tell me he's coming over to stay a while. I have plenty of linens, but I'm a little short on blankets. Does he really want to come over? I didn't know the boy was that upset. Oh, he isn't upset. He's just fascinated with the idea of being away from home for a while. For a while? Maybe I shouldn't have been so insistent on routine. No, sir. Oh, he's forgotten about last night. Why, the Leroy coming to our house is just a lark. Well, I don't know. Leroy's never wanted to leave home before. No, sir. Of course, if you don't want him to come, Unky, why... Oh, it isn't that. If he wants to go, let him go. Well, while my coffee's cooling, I think I'll run upstairs and get his blanket and pillow. Oh, me... Yes, sir. Now, Bertie, don't look at me like that. When I make Leroy toe the mark, I'm thinking of his future. Last night, I was only exercising my usual farsightedness. Yes, sir. It's pretty early to be coming home from the office. But I'd like to see what Leroy's up to. Yeah, he's had a whole day to think about it. He won't move. He'd miss his old uncle too much. Hi, Unc. Boy, am I glad you're home. Yeah, glad you're home too, Leroy. Will you hold the door open while I take a load of my stuff out on the porch? Zeke. Are you taking all that over to Marjorie's? Oh, sure. I'll be back for another load. Who knows how long I'll stay? Have you gone, Miss Gilsey? No, oh, he'll be back, Bertie. He will? For another load. And I'm fixing his favorite supper tonight. Oh? Hoping little Leroy would reconsider. Well, Bertie, we shouldn't stand in the way of his going over there. But it might not hurt to tell him about the dinner. I was hoping he'd smell it cooking. Yeah, I do. Chicken and dumplings. Yes, sir. I got the electric fan in the kitchen blowing it through the house. Hey, hey! Move it, Ben! Beep, beep! Uh, Leroy. Yeah, huh? Guess what Bertie's having for dinner. I'm fixing chicken and dumplings, Leroy. Yeah? Oh, boy, I'd like some. You would? That's our old Leroy. Put some on a dish and I'll eat it over at Marjorie's. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll take it to my room and eat it for a midnight snack. <laughs> it didn't work, Bertie. No, sir, he's gone. Yeah, I guess so. The chicken and dumplings won't do it. He's gone. Open the door again, will you? Uh, just a minute, Leroy. Yeah? Are you taking your fishing tackle? There's still snow on the ground. Well, Bronco and I may want to go fishing next summer. 
Hank. Come on, open the door. Yes, yes. Be seeing you, Bertie. So long, Hank. Bye, Leroy. Goodbye. Well, not very many of us left, Bertie. No, sir. He even took the dog over. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll run up and look at his room. If I know Leroy, he left it in a terrible mess. Say, took an awful lot of his things. Cleaned off the top of his dresser. Except for one thing. My picture. He takes the dog and leaves my picture. <laughs> George Leroy fooled me. I didn't think the little rascal would move over to Mine Trees. Oh, well. wonder what Peavy has for lunch. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildas. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Peavy, is this today's menu? Yes, it's today's, tomorrow's, the next day's, and also yesterday's. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid of that. Why don't you change your menu? Well, how many ways can you serve a salami sandwich? <laughs> yeah, all right. Dress it up with a piece of cheese. Very yeah, well. Peavy, did you know Leroy moved over to Marjorie's yesterday? You don't change. Yeah. He rebelled against the routine around home and decided he needed a change. <laughs> he plans to stay a while, does he? He even took his fishing pole. Said he and Bronco might want to go fishing next summer. What'll I do, Peavy? Well, you might dig the worms for him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Phoebe, do you realize Leroy could stay months or years? Mm, that's possible. I might never see him, except when I'm looking out the window for him and he happens to pass the house. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, that's a very sad picture. Yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll meet the little fellow after school and plead with him to come home. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, that could be the wrong approach. Oh, wouldn't it be better if you could make Leroy want to come home of his own accord? Well, that makes sense. Chances are Leroy doesn't realize how lucky he is. It isn't easy to get that across to him. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Stuart. I'm a little late for work again. Well, that's all right. There are no deliveries to be made anyway. Not well, right fine. I'll, I'll go in the back room and sit down and, and wait on developments. Uh, Peavy, I didn't know you had a delivery boy. Yes, sir. Stuart, don't you know Mr. Jonas Peavy? Well, I've seen him in parades... He's the water commissioner. Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> Hello, Stuart. Hello, sir. Stuart is Mr. Watson's son. Yes, sir. Well, Stuart, I know your father. Oh, he knows you, too. He mentions your name every time the water bill comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. When Stuart came in for a job, I didn't recognize him. Seems he's grown two feet in the last year. Just about. Well, I'll bet you're on the basketball team, Stuart. <laughs> no, sir. I'm a little clumsy under the basket. I keep getting my head caught in the net. <laughs> <laughs> That's very amusing, Stuart. Yes, sir. Mr. Peavy, will it be all right if I run over to the wine and make arrangements for my room? Very well, Stuart. Your family leaving today? Oh, yes, sir. They're going to Center City for the weekend. Well, I'm happy to have met you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thank you, Stuart. Nice meeting you. Yes, sir. Nice, polite boy, Peavy. Yes, he is. Handy around the store, too, especially when I need something off the top shelf. <laughs> You know, Peavy, I've been thinking. Why should Stuart go to the Y? Well, his folks are going out of town for the weekend. You heard him. By George, I'll invite him to my house. Your house? When Leroy sees another boy moving into his room, he'll come home on the run. That might work. What do you mean, it might work? Peavy, you know you'd resent somebody taking your place. Mm, yes. It's like me dropping you for some other friend. You know you couldn't stand it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. Here's news for every woman who loves a bargain. Kraft's new parquet margarine makes it possible for you to get beautiful Powers model nylon stockings at half price. These are lovely, full-fashioned nylons, styled by John Robert Powers and worn by many of America's best-dressed models. They're 51-gauge, 15-denier, and guaranteed first quality. 
A specially designed flexible top assures a smooth, perfect fit, and their tapered heel makes ankles look slimmer. They sell regularly at $1.50 a pair, but now you can get these famous Powers model nylons at half price. This is all you do. Buy a pound of parquet margarine, tear off the yellow panel from the side of the package, and mail it to Kraft with 75 cents. Instead of $1.50, you send only 75 cents. Complete instructions for ordering are given inside every parquet package. You have a choice of six sizes, either a dark seam or a self-color seam, and either temptation or glamour, two of the season's smartest shades. Order as many pairs as you want, and each pair costs you only 75 cents when you enclose the yellow side panel from a pound of Kraft's new parquet, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Be sure to get parquet tomorrow so you can begin building your luxurious wardrobe of nylon stockings at half price. Well, the great Gildersleeve felt a little injured when Leroy moved over to Marjorie's. Then our sly water commissioner conceived a clever scheme to make his nephew want to come back home. He invited another boy to use Leroy's room. Well, Stuart's all moved in. He's a little long for Leroy's bed, but he seems delighted. I just can't wait to let Leroy know his room is occupied. He'll be begging to come back. I'll just make it appear that I don't care one way or the other. Come on in. Hello, Marjorie. Leroy up? Mm-hmm. He just went out back to feed the dog. Well, at least he hasn't forgotten the dog. <laughs> Did you come over to take him home, Unky? Yeah, I should say not. I just came by to tell him about some changes over home. Oh? Oh, he's coming in now. Leroy, Unky's here. Hi, Unky. Hello, my boy. Marge, can I have this pastry left from breakfast? Well, I suppose so. Gee, thanks. If it's all right with Unky. Oh, don't ask me. This is your house. Leroy? Yeah? Aren't you coming in to see your old uncle? Uh, sure. Just stop to get the pastry. Have you uh, noticed anything different over home, my boy? Haven't looked. Oh, then you didn't see the light in your window last night. No, I was listening to the radio. Yeah, we had quite an evening at our house. Stuart and me. Stuart? Who's Stuart, Unky? He's the boy who moved into Leroy's room. My room? Oh, I guess I just didn't get around to telling you. Yes, sir, Stuart and I had quite a time last night. Unky, what's this all about? Well, after Leroy moved out of his room, it seemed a shame to leave it empty. But a nice boy like Stuart could use it. And Stuart's a nice boy. You're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. Stuart moved into Leroy's room bag and baggage. What do you think of that, Leroy? I think it's keen. <laughs> you do? Sure, I got the rent out of it, don't I? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Bertie, that breakfast tray looks great. Yes, sir, but you never asked me to fix one like this for Leroy. No, Bertie, I just want to impress Leroy. Yes, sir. Is he coming over right away? I phoned Miss Marjorie, like you said, and she sent him over for the loaf of bread. Fine. Wish they don't need any more than that Stuart needs his breakfast in bed. Uh, Bertie, I'm only trying to get Leroy back. Here he comes. Hi, Bertie. Hello, Leroy. Come on, Aunt. Good morning, my boy. Marge said to come over and get a loaf of bread. Good. She must be off her rocker. I looked in the bread box and she had three loaves. And maybe she's putting you on bread and water. <laughs> I got the bread out, Leroy. There it is, right on the table. Yeah? How'd you know I was going to ask for it? How'd I know? Well, Miss Marjorie said, uh, that is your uncle told yeah, me that. Bertie, uh... is everything on the tray ready to go up? Yes, sir. Well, looks good. Smells good, too. What's that for? The breakfast in bed, my boy. You're going to take it up to bed and eat it? No, 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 no. This is for Stuart. Yeah? Yeah, let's see if everything's here. Bacon, eggs, jam, cinnamon toast, jam, orange juice, waffles, jam. <laughs> By the way, Leroy, have you had your breakfast? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> well, you'd better run along with your loaf of bread while I take this up to Stuart. You're kidding. You're not going to take breakfast up to him. Oh, yes, I am. 
I'm letting him sleep in because we were up a little late last night. <laughs> took him to a movie. I thought you took him to a movie the night before. Well, I guess I did, didn't I? Yes, sir. I guess I'd better get up there with the tray. Serving him breakfast in bed. This I gotta see. No, Leroy, you better stay down here. He might think you want him to come back. Well, we don't want Stuart to be uncomfortable while he's here. Okay. I'll wait downstairs. How do I know there's anybody in my room? <laughs> uh, getting hungry, Stuart? I'll be right down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no, no, I'm bringing breakfast up to you. There, how do you like the looks of this? Hey, you really got something there. I'll uh, put the tray on your knees. If you get them down a bit so you can reach it. Yes, sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, you don't have to do this for me. No, Stuart, enjoy yourself. Hey, there. But when somebody fixes me a breakfast like this, well, well, the least I can do is get up and eat it. No, 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 you just stay in bed. Boy, if my mother could see me now. Just rest up. It's Saturday night. We may go to another movie. <laughs> what was that? Oh, there's somebody slamming the door. Excuse me, Stuart, while I look out the window. Yes, sir. You look out the window and I'll look into the breakfast. Yeah, there goes Leroy, with his hands stuffed in his pockets. <laughs> look at him kick that can. <laughs> What can I do for you? Nothing. Just wandering around till I feel like going home. To Marge's, at least. Yes, I understand that's home to you now. Sort of. I hope it was all right with you when Mr. Gildersleeve gave you room to my delivery boy. Why should I care? Why should I care if Unc takes him breakfast in bed? <laughs> he has breakfast in bed? Yeah, he gets the biggest breakfast you've ever seen. I didn't think he was taking on as many malted milks down here. And, and he doesn't do a thing except lie around on his big, long back. <laughs> Unc even hauls out the ashes now. My, my. Excuse me while I answer the phone, Leroy. Sure. Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gilnick, please. Yes? Yeah. Very well. Leroy, it's your uncle. It is? Does he want to talk to me? No, he just wants to order a gallon of ice cream. Gosh. When I was there, he never ordered more than a quart. <laughs> that tall little Leroy. No, Bertie. Let's be careful of the dishes. Yes, sir. But you know he wants to come home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I hope so. But he hasn't been around since Stuart left. Why don't you go tell Leroy that his room is empty? Why don't you go tell him that Stuart was just here while his folks was out of town? No, no, Bertie. Leroy has to come home of his own accord. This hurts me worse than it does him. Huh. Besides, moving was Leroy's idea to begin with. He rebelled against the routine around here. Wanting to stay up late. Wanting to... I'll go to the door, Bertie. Bertie's pretty upset. Well, so am I. But I have to be firm. Oh, dear. Things a parent has to go through. Leroy! Hi, Unc. Well, I didn't expect you to ring the doorbell to your own home. I'm not so sure it's mine. Come in, my boy. Thank you. Hey, won't you sit down? Well, if it's okay. Well, why wouldn't it be? Well, I thought maybe you and Stuart had something to do. I don't want to be in the way. Leroy, my boy, Stuart is no longer here. No kidding? He was just staying with us while his parents were out of town. My room's vacant, huh? Very vacant. Well, I've been thinking. Oh, when you had a vacancy, I might talk to you about something. Oh? Uh, Marge's twins are a little noisy, and uh, if it's all right with you, uh, I mean, if nobody objects... Leroy, we'd be delighted to have you back. You would? You bet. We've missed you. Oh, boy. Bertie! Yes, sir? 
I want you to meet a little boy who's come to live with us. Another one? <laughs> Leroy! Hi, Bertie! <laughs> boy, we sure are glad to see you. Yeah. I'm going to run right upstairs and sit your room. King, Bertie! Goodbye, George. This is quite a homecoming, Leroy. Yeah. Unc? Yes, my boy? I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah? Fire away. You don't think more of that other kid who was here than you do of me, do you? Oh, of course not. Swell. So I get breakfast in bed two shows a week and you haul off the ashes. Leroy! <laughs> oh, well. It's nice to have the boy back. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Tomorrow's the day to buy Kraft's wonderful new parquet margarine, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You'll enjoy parquet's fresh, appetizing taste. And you'll also enjoy the opportunity to build a glamorous hosiery wardrobe at half price. In every package of parquet margarine, you'll find full instructions for getting famous Powers model nylon stockings for just 75 cents. Remember to get Kraft's delicious, smooth-spreading new parquet margarine when you go shopping tomorrow. Oh, it sure is nice to have Leroy home again, ain't it, Mr. Kilsley? Yes, it is, Bertie. But Leroy's making it rough on me. Yeah, I never should have catered so much to Stuart. No, sir, you sure shouldn't. Uh, by the way, Stuart left his sweater here, Miss Gilsey. He did? Yes. His sweater? Well, I'd better phone him and tell him. Yes, sir. Hi, Unc. What are we going to do tonight? Uh, Leroy. How about another double feature movie? My boy, it's a school night. You know the deal. Two shows a week. You uh, don't want me to go back to marches, do you? Please, Leroy. I'm trying to dial the phone. Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, uh, when you finish, the ashes have to be taken out. You know the deal. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, hello, uh, Stuart? Stuart? Unc, Unc, don't bring him back. Hang up the deal's off. Yeah, good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Jerry Farber, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good cooks know that the fresher the salad oil, the smoother the French dressing. The fresher the cooking oil, the better the cake. And now Kraft Oil is guaranteed to reach your kitchen as wonderfully fresh as it was the minute it was bottled. That's because Kraft Oil, and only Kraft Oil, is sealed with an airtight vacuum cap. Get Kraft Oil tomorrow with confidence that it's the freshest oil you can buy. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.